Water is pumped from a reservoir at a lower elevation to one at a higher elevation through unlined concrete piping. There is 3,500 feet of piping with an 8 inch diameter and the elevation difference between the water surfaces in each reservoir is 25 feet. The system's pump curve is shown below. The Hazen Williams formula is used to estimate friction losses and the friction coefficient is 130. The flow through the system will be most nearly A. 875 B. 725 C. 575 or D. 425 Pause the video and give yourself 5 minutes to solve the problem. Have you finished solving the problem? Let's see if you got the correct answer. Today we will discuss pipeline friction. When water flows in a pipeline, there is friction acting between the flowing water and the pipe wall and between the layers of water moving at different velocities in the pipe. This is because of the viscosity of the water. The flow velocity is actually zero at the pipe wall and maximum along the center line of the pipe. The frictional resistance to flow causes a loss of energy in the system. This loss of energy is manifested as a continuous pressure drop along the path of flow. It is often necessary to be able to compute the expected pressure drop in a given system or to design a new system with a specified maximum pressure loss. To be able to design new water distribution pipelines or sewage force mains or to analyze existing pipe networks, it is necessary to be able to calculate head losses, pressures, and flows throughout the system. There are several formulas in hydraulics to do this, but the Hazen Williams equation is one of the most commonly used. So we have the Hazen Williams equation, where V equals the flow velocity through the system, C equals the pipe roughness coefficient, R equals the hydraulic radius, and S equals the slope of the energy line, or the head loss per length of pipe. Since we are using US customary units, the coefficient will be 1.318, and when using SI units, the coefficient will equal 0.849. Since our final answer will be a flow rate, I'll go ahead and convert this velocity term to a flow rate term, Q, by multiplying both sides by A, which is the area of the pipe. So we have C, which is 130. The diameter of the pipe is eight inches. So we can calculate the cross-sectional area, which equals 0.35 square feet. We can solve the hydraulic radius, which for a circular pipe is one quarter of the diameter, which equals about 0.17 feet. After placing these terms into the equation, we are left with the following. In some problems when using the Hazen Williams formula, you can plug in the slope of the gradient line, which would be the elevation change over the length of the piping and solve for the flow rate. However, since we have the pump curve, our goal will be to solve for the total dynamic head or TDH for various flow rates shown on the graph and see what flow we can get the total dynamic head to equal the pump curve for our eight inch diameter pipe system. The intersection of the two represents the operating point of the pump in the given system. Sometimes you may get lucky and get the correct answer just plugging in the slope from the given information, but using the pump curve will guarantee the correct answer. So since we will be plugging in various flow rates, let's rearrange the equation to solve for the slope and we get the following. The TDH we will be solving for to place on the pump curve equals the following where delta H is the difference in elevation, H sub F as mentioned earlier equals the head loss, V equals the flow velocity, which is equal to the flow rate, Q divided by the pipe's cross-sectional area, and G equals gravity, which in US customary units equals 32.17 feet per second squared. Delta H equals 25 feet across the system. We can solve for the velocity at given flow rates and the slope equation, S equals H sub F divided by L can be manipulated to solve for H sub F, which equals the slope times the pipe length. Therefore, we will multiply the length of our piping by our equation equaling the slope 
to get the head loss of that specific flow rate. Now that we have all the data we need to plug into the TDH equation at various flow rates, I usually pick four or five flow rates to solve the TDH for. So let's use our answer choices. Remember that our answer choices are in gallons per minute and we have been using units of feet so far. So remember to convert before placing into the equation. I do a special chart like this to do all my calculations and here's what I get. We can now plot the TDH on the graph for our given flow rates and see which is closest to intersecting the pump curve for our given pipe. It looks like the TDH for the flow rate of 575 gallons per minute is almost dead on to hit our pump curve for an 8 inch diameter pipe. This means that our answer will be C. Join us for episode 39 of 52 PE exam problems in 52 weeks.